Hey, what's up guys? It's Alec from Cichlid Bros. And in today's video, I'm gonna be taking down my 15 gallon column planted tank and replacing it with a water box clear mini tin. But first, as always, hit that like and subscribe button and let's dive right in. All right, so here's my 15 gallon column tank. I did a video on its setup about six months ago that I will link in the upper right hand corner. This tank has gone through some changes since then. The column style is aesthetically pleasing and I love the plants and livestock in it, but it doesn't exactly have that look of a show tank that I'm going for. I ended up deciding I wanted a clown killifish and shrimp tank. The shrimp I went with is from the Caradina family, the crystal red shrimp. This shrimp is considered moderately difficult because it does need an active buffering substrate and a somewhat low TDS, which is total dissolved solids in the water column. To get the ideal TDS reading, it's best to use RODI water, then remineralize that water. You can do this by buying RO water from your local fish store, or you can do what I did and get your own RODI system. I got the Aquatic Life four stage 100 gallon per day system, and I've been extremely happy with it. I also bought Salty Shrimp GH and KH Plus to remineralize the water for the shrimp. Yes, science! For plants, I wanted to keep things easy and low tech, and with the column style, I thought Ballastinaria would be the perfect plant for this tank, and I've loved it in here. This tank was given to me by a friend and has been heavily used for years. The silicone is even starting to wear off, and a leak is starting to form at the top corner if I fill it too high. So, I thought the tank's old age paired with non-ideal footprint for my Achilles and shrimp meant it was time for a change. I've always loved the clear, clean, crisp look of a simple rimless tank, and the water box clear mini tin was exactly what I was looking for aesthetically and for footprint. The footprint is shorter and longer, giving the Achilles more surface area to swim and shrimp more ground space to roam. So now that you've been caught up to speed, let's start aquascaping. Yeah, baby! <laughs> All right, so first for the substrate, I again went with the Fluval Stratum, which has worked out well for us in multiple tanks and helps buffer the water parameters to meet the needs of the crystal red shrimp. I will also be adding some Sea Chem root tabs for the Ballastinaria to help get them to jump start in the new tank. For the rocks, I wanted to try a sort of low-tech Ubigumi scape. Typically, these types of scapes utilize CO2 and expensive lighting, and it's a pretty high-tech setup, and it usually comes with the carpeting plant. But for me to start out, I just plan on corralling the Vralison area back into one corner of the tank using my rock scape and possibly adding a carpeting plant near the front down the road. In the meantime, I'll be using my mosses to help seed this tank and give the shrimp somewhere to hide. I am also adding this biofilm enhancer to help the shrimp as well. I brought over the five longest bowel plants from the old tank to get that look of the plants reaching across the tank. For lighting, I went with the Asta 20 Freshwater Light. Just give me the lights and pass the Joe. I'll leave the links to all my equipment in the description below. Some of our final judge. Thumbs up! For the equipment in this tank, I temporarily set up the same sponge filter from the column tank to help seed the water box, but as you can see, this is a complete eyesore and I need to make a change for the long term. 
The external filter I went with is the Sun Sun HW603B. I decided I'm going to keep that clean look by using an external filter attached to something really cool I learned about in my plant to tank research called lily pipes. To make a long story short, lily pipes are a glass inflow and outflow fittings that you can attach to an external filter to help hide your equipment. There are a few different kinds of lily pipes based on your needs that you can use. For me, I went with a spin outflow style pipe, which minimalizes or minimizes surface agitation and flow for your tank, which clown killies and shrimp prefer. All right, so here we have the filter all taken apart so we can see what's inside. For planted tanks, filtration is mainly mechanical for what you need. It has this little thing that goes on the bottom where you can put the bio rings or any type of bio media at the very bottom, followed by this, followed by your stacks. The water will enter from the top, go down through to the bottom, and then come back out and up from this on the side. All right, let's get this ugly equipment out of here. I'm gonna use the bio rings from the sponge filter, you can see in the bottom there, to seed the new filter and clean this look up. So the heater I got was this Heiger brand 50 watt. It's really small, only about five inches long, maybe one inch wide. And it has an external uh, temperature control. So it really minimizes the profile inside the tank. So let's get it changed out. All right, and here it is. The smaller heater has been installed and wow. A great success. It made a huge difference. I can hardly see any equipment in this tank. Voila, he is clean. As for where we go from here, the initial setup of a planted tank tends to lead to an algae bloom. So I'll be performing small water changes daily for about two weeks to combat that. Then about every other day for the next two weeks after that. And lastly, I wanted to give a shout out to the Planted Fish Tank YouTube community. You've helped me a ton and really inspired me as I take a deeper dive into planted aquariums. All right guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for watching. I had a lot of fun making this video, and the best part is the journey is just getting started. I'll be sure to keep you updated every step of the way. Until then, see you next time.